Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is No Saint Left Behind. I'm Brother Zahar coming to you with another study today. I pray that it be edified. First, I just want to start off with giving all praises unto Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekar Kodash. I'd like to say Shalom to all the Akims out there, all the elders and the apostles. I'd like to say Shalom to you all. All right, today's lesson is going to be a, uh, it's going to be a breakdown on John 3.16. I really didn't want to do this breakdown, but it was on my spirit. And all week long, it just kept coming to my head, coming to my head. And so I decided today just to go ahead and do a little study on it this morning and, you know, do a little breakdown on it. And it's the spirit that's put it on my heart. And we're going to get into this John 3.16, man, so that we can get rid of the lies, you know, that these churches and the rest of the world is telling. You know, everybody know what John, that's everybody's favorite scripture. John 3.16, even Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know what I'm saying, his entertainment name, you know, during his wrestling, he had what? John 3.16 on him. So we want to see what John 3.16 is really talking about, you know. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and read. Let's get started. Let's not waste no time. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, now people take this way out of context. Because, see, we got to get into the meaning in, in the meaning of words during that time. Excuse me, Salakia. We can't take the meaning of the Hebrew and Greek words during that time and make it mean what we want it to mean today during the meaning of words today. Because the way we speak and the meaning of words today wasn't the meaning of the words back then during the ancient time or during, you know, um, the uh, biblical time. So we want to break this thing down. First of all, we want to look up what is the word, uh, what is that, uh, that word, word, world is. Because throughout through the Bible, you got like three different worlds or three different meanings or four different meanings for the word world. But this particular word, world right here is cosmos. And this Greek is a Greek word. And you can look it up as a, at a G2889 is cosmos, which means inappropriate or suitable in the circumstances, suitable fitting. So it's, it's a, a word that means appropriate. You know, cosmos is another, this word world, it's another way of saying inappropriate or suitable in the circumstances, suitable or fitting. All right, let's keep going. In harmon harmonious agreement or constitution, order of government. So what this word world means, this word world means a group of people. It doesn't mean every individual in the world. It doesn't mean earth. You know, it just means certain inhabitants of the world earth. So this word world means it's a, a, a constitution, or order, or a government body. All right? Or appropriate suitable fittings. Okay. And so we understand that the Most High only gave his word unto Israel. So, and we understand at this time, Israel didn't have dealings with nobody else. So, when you go into this word world in John 3, 16, cosmos, this word world means a, a group of people, a government body of people with have the same mind and same understanding. All right, and we understand that, I think is a uh, matter of fact, let me see right quick. Amos, is it Amos 3 and 6? Give me one second. That might be Amos 3 and 3. Okay, Amos 3 and 3 says, can two walk together except they agree? So we understand that this word cosmos it's talking about a group of people that agree or that has the same beliefs and that's in the same body. So it doesn't mean the whole in, inhabited world. It doesn't mean all nations in one. It just means one nation of people with, one, with, with something that they agree on, with something that they believe in on, which would be who? Yahweh Shah. So this word world is only talking about the Israelites. It's a government body, just like the American Constitution. You can't take the American Constitution and take it to Africa and read the Constitution in Africa. It doesn't mean nothing to them because it was only meant for the so-called white people, the Edomites, in America. The Constitution wasn't even for us. 
you so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and uh, uh, Hispanics, you have nothing to do with the Constitution. The Constitution say that we three-fifths of a man, human being. You know what I'm saying? The Constitution said that every man is treated equal. So we know that that what Constitution went for us because we're not treated equal. It was only for those that was in, in rulership, in charge, in that government body, which was the Edomites, so-called white man. And so this word world in John 3, 16, you know, which means a, a government, which means a government or a harmonious arrangement or order or a constitution. So this word world is only talking about a certain group of people. And we know from reading this Bible, this FUBU, that's what the Bible is, this FUBU, is for us and by us. This Bible is only for the Hebrew Israelites. So we're going to break down this John 3.16 and see what it means. All right? And matter of fact, we're going to, matter of fact, we're just going to go from John 3.16 right quick, and we're going to turn over to John 17. The Gospel of John, verse 17. The Gospel of John, verse 17, and we're going to read 6. We're going to start at verse 6. And, uh, yeah, we're going to start at verse 6. The Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Okay, what people, this is in red too now, let's don't get it misunderstood. This is red writing, so this is Yahweh Shah talking. So what people did the Most High give the word to, and when Yahweh Shah came, he, he reiterated everything the Father was saying through the so-called Old Testament, through the prophets and Moses, and he gave this word to these people that the Most High Yahweh has chosen. He chose this group of people, and he gave these group of people to Yahweh Shah, who you ignorantly call Jesus. So let's read this again. Chapter 17 of John, verse 6. I have manifested thy word unto the men which thou gavest me. So when he say he, he, he manifested, that means he revealed the word of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, which is this word, this Bible, unto the men which Yahweh has gave it to Yahweh Shah. So he said the men. What men did we know that was following Yahweh Shah? Hebrew Israelite men. The disciples. And other men that was following. We understood that some of the Pharisees followed them and some of them didn't. So the men, which was the Israelites, was the only people that was following Yahweh Shah. So that was the only people that Yahweh Shah gave the word unto. And that's the only people that the Father has chosen and was given unto Yahweh Shah. Let me go ahead and read through this thing. Verse 6 again. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. And so we knew at this time what nobody following Yahweh Shah, but who? You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Hebrew Israelites. The Africans wasn't following them. The so-called white men, the Edomites wasn't following them. The East Indians, the Ilamites, the Chinese, the uh, 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 Moabites, the Japanese, the Amorites. What none of these peoples following Yahweh Shah at this time. Only the Hebrew Israelites. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So with that alone, we understand that the Father only chose who? The Israelites. With that alone, we understand that the Father gave who? To Yahweh Shah. The Israelites, the lost sheep. Let's keep going. Verse 7. Now they have known, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. So he said he only gave his word to the Israelites once again. Let's keep going. Verse 9. I pray for them. This is Yahweh Shah talking. It's still in red, y'all. It's still in red. Let's see what he say. John 17 and 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So we understand that the only people that was following Yahweh Shah was the Hebrew Israelites, which you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So we understand that the only chosen people of the Father Yahweh are the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? So we understand that, that these are the only people that he gave the word to, 
And these are the only people that Yahweh Shah is praying for. And this word world right here in, um, in uh, John 17 and 9 is the same word world that we find in John 316, the cosmos. G288, uh, I think 9, right? G288 and 9. And we know that that means a government body, a constitutional order, a, a harmonious arraignment. So we know that this is only a certain group of people that has that, that's on one accord, that believes in the same thing, which we know that's the Israelites. We're the only people that have one God and that believed in one God and one God alone. Nobody else believed in our power. So we know that Yahweh Shah only prayed for you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But see, we understand that John 3.16 said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should have everlasting life. But then you go to John 17 and 9 and he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So that sounds like a contradiction. All right? If John 3.16 means that Yahweh Shah, who you equally call Jesus, is for the whole world, and then we get to John 17 and we find out that Yahweh Shah, who you equally call Jesus, only praying for particular people that's in the world, he's not praying for the whole world, then what we got here, we got a contradiction which the church is giving y'all. Because we understand that these people, this world of people, is only the Hebrew Israelites and nobody else. All right? And matter of fact, let me read, uh, let me just go ahead and read verse 10. He says, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So what people was the Father and the Son glorified in. The only people that the Father and the Son is, was glorified in was the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are you Hebrew Israelites. We the only people that kept the law, statutes, and commandments. We was the only people that was getting circumcised. We was the only people that was keeping our own customs. We was the only people that suffered the uh, judgment of the Most High for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. So he only deal with us. So we got to break this John 3.16 all the way down. We got to take this meat which that some people say this is a simple scripture but if it was so simple why don't nobody understand it this is not a simple john 6 john 3 16 is nothing simple about it this is strong meat that must be broke down and fed to the children and so the most high is going to allow me to chew this meat up you know how you chew your meat up you about to feed your baby you chew it up get it real right for him and then you give the meat to the baby now the baby can eat eat the meat and consume it and that's what the most high is about to use me to do right now for John 3.16. Let's also turn to 1 John. Salakia, give me a second, my people. Let's also turn to 1 John 5 and 19. The epistle of 1 John 5 and 19. Let's turn there and let's see. And this is the same word, world, once again, cosmos, G22, G2889. Which also means the exact, exact, exact same thing it's been meaning the whole time. In the other scriptures we read. John, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 9. Uh, verse 19. And it reads. And we know that we are of Yahweh. And the world, and the whole world lieth in wick, wick, uh, wickedness. So in 1 John 5 and 19. And it says. And we know that we are of God. That we are of Yah uh, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It's only talking to the Hebrew Israelites. And mostly it's talking to the elect, the chosen. It says, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. So he said that we are of God, but the whole world is lying in wickedness. What world is lying in wickedness? That's all the other nations. The only people or the only world that's of God is you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And that's only really one-third of you that he's chosen out of Israel. He's going to put two-thirds of Israel to death, and they're going to have to be born back into the kingdom. But we can see that in 1 John 5 and 19. And we know that we are of God, of Yahweh, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. So we know that John 3.16 doesn't mean that Yahweh Shai came for every single person in the world. He only came for one group of people, and that's the Hebrew Israelites. And as we further get along, you will further understand the word of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. All right, now let's go back to John 3.16.
And let's start at the beginning of John 3.16 and let's see who Yahweh Shai is talking to and let's get the context of the scripture so we can know exactly what's going on. Let's go back. These bugs out here trying to attack me. All right. So now that we are at John 3.16, we're going to start at, uh, we're going to start at the Gospel of John chapter 3. And we're going to read all the way, we're going to read this whole thing and get the context out of this thing so that we can know what John 3.16 really means. All right. Uh, the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So we see that Yahweh Shai is about to have a conversation with a man by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was what? A Hebrew Israelite. All right. Matter of fact, he was a Pharisee, which means he was a teacher or a so-called rabbi, what they call Salakia. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So he was in authority. He was a ruler of the Jews during this time. Verse 2. The same came to Yahweh by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Yahweh. For no man can do these miracles or signs that thou doest except Yahweh be with him. So we see that this conversation is between two Hebrews. Yahweh Shah, who eagerly called Jesus, and Nicodemus, which was a ruler of the Jews. So being that being that this, this conversation is of two people with the same mind frame, two people from the same uh, uh, nation with the same nationality, which are Hebrew Israelites. So this context of this, of this scripture is talking about Hebrews. It's not talking about nobody outside of the Israelites. Just like if you was at home and you was talking to your family and you say, whosoever in this house uh, uh, clean up, can go with me to the movies. So if you got 10 people in your house and only eight of them clean up and two of them didn't, you only taking eight of them with you to the movies. Okay, now, so even though you sell whosoever in your house, they can't go outside your house and say whosoever cleaning up out here can go with us to the movies. No, because you was only talking to your people in your house, in your government or in your constitution or in your order the people that was in your world, which was in your house. So that means that's just for your house, not for the people outside your house. And so that's what's going on right here in this conversation. It's two Jews having a conversation, two Hebrews having a conversation about how men should be born again. Let's keep going. Verse 3. Yahweh Shah answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Yahweh Shai answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So now we got to find out in this context, what is the water and what is the spirit that a man must be born by that he can enter into the kingdom of the Most High? All right? And we're going to start off, and we're going to go to Ephesians. We're going to go to Ephesians 5 and 25, 5 and 26, so we can understand what this word water is. What is Yahweh Shah saying, telling Nicodemus, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom? All right, so we got to get the whole context of this thing, man, so we can know what's going on. So we're going to go to Ephesians 5 and uh, 26, I believe, right? And it reads, that he, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So in Ephesians 5 and 26, we understand that the washing of water, the only way you can be cleansed, or purified is by the washing of water. And we know that the washing of water is what? Which is the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So the most high Yahweh, I mean not Yahweh, but uh, Yahweh Shai was telling Nicodemus that he must be obedient to the word of the most high to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That means he must repent and come back and rehearse these law statute commandments to the best of his ability. 
You know what I'm saying? So the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. So he got to come back and be obedient unto the word of God to be born again. Let's keep going. Let's, I'm going to read this one more time. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 26. That he might be sanctified and cleansed with the washing of water by the word. So we understand that the word of Yahweh, which is what which what cleanses you, and is a, a, a helps you to be born again. All right, let's go to Ephesians six and seventeen, and that read Ephesians six and seventeen reads, and take it the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. So we understand that the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit is also the word of Yahweh. And that's a part of put your, putting on your full armor. So that's a part of being what? Being born again. You got to get this word into your spirit. That's why I said the helmet is the word. Your helmet is the word. That means you must put this word in your spirit. All right. This word must be in your spirit. And it said the sword of the spirit. So this word is also the sword because this word is what cuts off sin from your life. When you begin to do what this word say, you begin to turn from homosexuality. You begin to turn from eating unclean foods. You begin to turn from sleeping with other men and women. You know, so you begin to turn and repent from these sins that the Most High hates. All right. So let's go. Let's go to uh, the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, in verse 3. And it reads, Now we are cleansed through the word, which I, this is what, this is what um, Yahweh Shad is saying. In the Gospel of John 15 and 3. Now we are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So we see that the word of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad, is what cleanses us. This word is the water. This is your baptism. You don't got to go get dipped in no water. You got to apply this word. You got to accept this word and apply it in your life. And that's what cleanses you and begin to make you pure and holy. Read that again. The Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 3. Now we are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So when you accept this word and begin to do what this word say, then that's when you become clean. All right. Now let's go to John 17 and 17. John 17 and 17 says, Sanctify them. Through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So this word is what sanctifies and cleanses us and makes us holy. So that's what Yahweh Shah was telling Nicodemus. Man, you got to get into this word. You got to receive this word in its full entirety. You can't say, oh, I just want to hear the New Testament. And the Old Testament done away with. No. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the word. None of the word is done away with. The Most High said he changed not. All right, so you got to get this word in your spirit and begin to apply it into your life. You got to be able, you got to be able to, you, you got to begin to walk this word out, man. You got to begin to walk it out. All right, and it said in the verse, uh, John, Gospel of John 17 17 said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, what do this word sanctify mean? All right, and this word sanctify, it means to uh, sanctify, to cleanse externally. Sanctify means to cleanse, to be cleansed externally. That means from the outside, you'll be, you'll be clean in the inside and it'll manifest on the outside. See, most people are cleaning themselves on the outside. That's what the Pharisee was doing. See, they was cleaning themselves on the outside, but they were still wicked and had dead men's bones on the inside. Their spirit was dead, but they were looking clean on the outside. That was called man pleasers. But the word sanctify means you got to be cleansed from the inside without. So you clean your inside. Once you clean your inside, then you begin to burn fruit. Then you begin to see the change in your life on the outside. Because right, we must, uh, and then it, it means, sanctify also means to, to be free from the guilt of sin. Sanctify means to be free from the guilt of sin. And so how is you free from the guilt of sin? You are free from the guilt of sin by keeping this word and applying this word in your life. All right, you can't choose parts and bits and parts of this word. You got to accept this word in its entirety and apply it to your life. You got to keep what you can keep. Where you lack and fall short at, that's what the spirit of the Most High, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, will come in and lift you up. All right. 
Now let's go and see what this spirit is. He said, because um, Yahweh Shah told him that you must be born of water and of the spirit. So let's see what this spirit that you must be born of is. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 7 and 14. Let me see. I'm, I'm going to read this again. The Gospel of John, chapter 3 and verse 5. And Yahweh shall Yahweh answer, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So we don't find out what the water was. The water was is this word. You got to apply this word in your life. You can't be hearers of the word. You got to also be what? Doers of this word. All right. And now we're going to find out what he mean by being the spirit. So you got to be born of water. You got to be born of water and of the spirit. Now, let's see what this uh, spirit is. All right. Uh, John, uh, Romans 7 and 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So the Bible said that we know that the law is spiritual. So this spirit that Yahweh Shah is telling uh, uh, um, uh, Nicodemus about is the law. So he was telling him that you got to believe all this word, and you got only you got got not only believe the word, but you got to what also rehearse these law, statutes, and commandments. You got to keep this law to the best of your ability. You can't be eating these unclean foods and uh, sleeping around with other men, women, or the women cheating on a man and uh, uh, selling drugs to your people or bearing false witness on your people. You know what I'm saying? You can't do these things. You got to rehearse these law, statutes, and commandments. You got to try to keep the Sabbath, man. You got to try to keep the atonement. You know, you got to try to keep these holy days. You know what I'm saying? To see, the Most High knows your heart. So he know if you're trying or if you're not trying. All right, and let's go to another scripture. Uh, let's go to Romans 8 and 2. I'm going to read 2 through 4, matter of fact. For the law of the Spirit is life. So we know that the law of the Spirit, the law is life, man. Once you begin to rehearse these laws, statutes, commandments, you begin to what? Have life in your body, man. The Most High begin to deal with you. Because once you begin to rehearse these laws, statutes, commandments, you are no longer a sinner. I don't care if you still live in this world and you still falling short here and there. As long as you ain't committing these sins willfully and you rehearsing these law, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability, the Bible says a righteous man falls at 70 times 7, but he gets back up. That's a righteous man. So the Bible says a righteous man sin, but he just don't sin willfully. He don't wake up and say, well, I'm going to go over here and screw this man and woman today. Well, I'm going to go get me some pork, shrimp, and lobster today. You know, a, a righteous man doesn't do that. All right, he might go buy something and end up eating it, but then realize later on, oh man, that had pork or pork product in it. Like somebody might be eating gummy bears and didn't know that it had pork product in it. All right, now you know, so that means to repent and turn from it. Don't keep falling to the same thing. And in the eyes of the Most High, you will still be considered as a righteous person. As long as you're rehearsing these law, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability. If you mess up, you repent and turn from it, you are still righteous in the eyes of the Most High. You are righteous because the Spirit of the Most High dwells within you. The only way you felt guilty and repented from it is because the Spirit of the law, the Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah dwells in you. Romans 2 and 8. I mean, Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the for the for the law of the spirit of life. Let's read it again. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Hamasiah Yahweh had made me free from the law of sin and death. So once you rehearse these law, statutes, commandments, you get the life in you and you are free from death and from sin. It's not held against you because you're not willfully sinning. You might make a mistake here and there. But the grace and the forgiveness of the Most High is there. The grace is sufficient enough to meet you in every need you in as long as you repent and turn from it. Verse 3, for what the law cannot do, in that it was weak, through the flesh, Yahweh sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in, uh, hello, verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit 
So he's saying if you rehearsing these laws, statutes, commandments, then um, the, the righteousness of the law is being fulfilled in you. So you're not held bound by the law because you're, you're rehearsing it to the best of your ability and you're doing your best to keep it. If you fall, you get up and repent. But if you're just sinning willfully, knowing that what you're doing is wrong and you continue to do it, then you are dead. You are walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. All right, let's continue. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's, um, let's continue. Let's go back to John chapter 3 and let's read it on out. John chapter 3, verse 5. Yahweh shall answer, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So we, feel, we find out what being born again means. It means you got to rehearse these laws, statutes, commandments, and apply them into your life to the best of your ability. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse 7, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell Whence it cometh, and whether it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. He says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So you can hear the wind, you can hear it, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. We, like it's, the wind is blowing right now. I don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. I can hear it, and I can see the leaves moving. All right, and then he says... Um, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You don't see where the Spirit is coming from, but through your life, the people can see the manifest, the manifestation. Hold on, I can't even pronounce the word now. They can see the Spirit manifesting through your life, through your actions. Just like right now, if you can see these trees blowing, these leaves, we don't know where this wind is coming from, but we can see the manifestation of the wind because we can see the actions of the tree blowing, the leaves blowing. That's just like the spirit of the Most High. Once you rehearse these laws, that's commandments, and you start to apply them in your life, we don't know where that spirit, which way it came from, but we can see the manifestation of the spirit through our actions. Verse 9, Nicodemus demons answered and said unto him, How can these be? How could these things be? Verse 10, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? He said, man, you're supposed to be a master of Israel. You don't know, what's, you don't know these things? Because he was speaking spiritual to him and not carnal. See, Nicodemus was a carnal man. You know, he was living after the flesh. He wasn't living in the spirit. And that's what a lot of Pharisees was doing. That's why they called them, the, uh, Yahweh Shah called the Pharisees hypocrites. They was actors. You know, they was in front of you, you know, 